Hello and welcome, this is Angelo and here we are going to examine the King's Gamut, the system that we can see in our screens. And you can see that I have worked a lot actually, I have a lot, a lot of variations here and you are very welcome to download them and check it uh, by your own. If you are a beginner actually, first of all mm -hmm. I suggest you to download these files, check them by yourself and after that come back and we can examine together the King's Gambit and most specifically here the Bishop's Gambit. By the way, if you like to download this one from my website then I have a solution for you. How to find the PGN files? This is the starting position on my website and you can see this option register. You can register for free. Then you can log in and new item will appear profile. Please click it and you're going to see this page. Scroll down and click in your favorite opening line. Click it and then you're going to see the lessons inside. Here you can read a separate article and then you can start reading, study the lessons one after the other. The lessons are different and then you can download the PGN files on your computer by clicking here. A new window will appear and by clicking that one download you will get your files. And now we are here again, let's examine. First of all the King's Gambit White would like to unstabilize uh, Black Center because after e4 and e5 Black would like to create a very 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 solid center with a pawn there and after that to develop his pieces behind that pawn to build his pieces after this knight 2 f6 knight c3 developing the piece of castling it's a very logical very nice system but after f4 White would like to unstabilize Black's defenses. So what to do here? We examine many many moves but in this particular video we are going to examine this take. Kramming used to say that um, King's Gambit is an extra pawn for Black, right? Because he just captures something here and as you can see below me the computer said that Black is better. However here things are not so similar when we are playing uh, a, a practical game over the board and I'm going to show you how to play. After bishop f4, White's idea is to develop his pieces as soon as possible, stop this idea of d5, he is accepting this check, he can destroy his king side uh, castling rights, but he would like to develop his pieces extremely fast. In the PGN files I give you two lines actually, one of them, one of them my favorite is queen to h4, but I also give you knight f6 the other line, the first move to play here, knight f6. Now we play that one, he has to de destroy his castling and here we need to, to stop a little bit and think. What, wh what white would like to play? What do you think? The next moves are obviously something like this to attack our queen, he would like to play something like that to control the center like this, then he can attack this pawn and the king is there, not in, in a very nice position actually, but step by step he would like to organize his pieces uh, step by step, not right now. He thought that he has a more initiative with his light pieces and he can create more problems, for that reason he's playing this particular line. I used to play a lot of this system with uh, a friend of mine in my hometown many years ago and I remember the line that I'm saying to you because this person would li love the knights actually and I remember that I have to play d6 and after knight f3 I have to pin the knight and take the knight. This is the line that uh, I remember this line in this way because I played a lot of games with this person. Right now after bishop to g4 we have this, we have this tactical defense actually and um, the knight cannot really take our queen because we can take his queen attacking this pawn and if he just exchanges queens everything is just fine for black, right? Everything is just fine, we don't have any real problem there. But here I'd like you to remember something and you should remember after knight to c3 he's really threatening to capture our queen right now. I played the blitz game and I had the feeling that after this move I can pin that knight and everything is just fine, right? He cannot really touch my queen, I protect it. But after knight to c3 in one blitz game I just played another move, knight to c6 if I'm remembering correctly and after that he just captured my queen here. And after this I was, what? After that he can recapture here and I lost a piece. Black is a piece down. So this is not a nice variation actually, you should remember this one. And white is completely, completely winning. For that reason after knight to c3 he is protecting us and we need to take there on f3. And then we can continue, the line is going like this and we have knight to c6. 
here he has three main options actually, three key moves. One of them is bishop to b5, little inaccuracy, not the best. Another one is knight to d5, with a very similar way he's attacking f7 pawn, he would like to create this double threat. And the last but not least, we have the move bishop to b5. So let's go back actually, because I have something else here. Many strong players would like to trick you and they could remember this line or they would like to trick something and they say if I just develop my knight there obviously he's going to pin me right because he is this is what he's remembering can I confuse him yeah why not I can play the move knight to c3 first now what are you going to do if we play bishop to g4 maybe he can play knight f3 probably but maybe he would like to do something else and I have two games here played um, not in that way. I suggest you to go knight to g4 in any case, attack the queen and if he goes out with a knight just uh, swap it off, take that knight in order to eliminate of the board. Because um, if we go on, on e6 you can confuse yourself. There we have two moves. One of them is queen e2 and after knight to c6, very natural move, he played that one, queen has to go away and you can see here it's not, uh, it's playable of course, it's approximately equal, but black managed to keep this knight on, over the board and this could create more problems to black because white is uh, base his initiative thanks to his light pieces. And now after that move obviously you can see the queen is little of sight, he's attacking on c7, he's attacking on f4, what are you going to do now? Uh, you cannot really take with a bishop because you can take with a pawn probably giving a check he has some initiative, right? And after long castling, he can capture that pawn. The queen and the bishop is under attack, maybe taking here a counter-attacking move, try to do something, and after this he can play there, taking here, and after that attacking the queen. Queen give that check. In this particular game, we have more exchanges. The rook has to go away, and after that move, protecting the pawn on e4, Black played uh, this move with the idea to play h6 to kick this knight away and after this capturing that, that pawn we have d3 here, uh, knight back and finally Black managed to play this uh, very very strong move d5 very uh, nice and uh, tactical move actually and this is a better Sutovsky and Sipiano, Sipiano played uh, uh, better here and he managed to win the game because after this capture we have knight to b4 and we are attacking everything here as you can see white um, is uh, undeveloped and he's going to pay for this uh, bad development this is one game actually but another game didn't go went like this here we just examine queen e2 Another line is bishop to b3 and said, okay, what are you going to, to do with the black pieces? Probably you're going to play knight to c6, castling long side, right? So you can take this bishop, I can recapture with a pawn, activating my rook. This is um, White's idea, he would like to activate his pieces as fast as possible. And here we have knight to d7 actually, and uh, none other than Karyakin is with the black pieces. And it's very easy to confuse yourself if you, pl if you play the bishop on e3 and if you keep the piece on the board. Maybe he would like to go on, um, on c5, try to fight for that bishop. Maybe he would like to give to take the, the two bishop advantage, so he played that one. And now we have d4. As you can see now, a lot of pieces are on the board and obviously white is stopping that idea, maybe threatening this one. Black is hesitating to capture that bishop because the file will open and already we have some problems. This pawn is vulnerable as well and after g5 Karyakin tried to keep everything here and this is something that you should not do in King's Gambit. You should develop your pieces. He just uh, sacrifices one pawn but don't base your uh, your attack and your thinking system actually in order to protect that pawn you can give it back in order to develop your pieces development and complete the development development by castling uh, finalize this development of this uh, pieces that snoring there do something with these pieces right try to develop them and now after this he played that one now we have h4 and we have more problems what to do now because this pawn is under attack he would like to capture that pawn like this and after that move chess openings are extremely important and especially if you play blitz games do you struggle with them no more we have a specific and very simple solution for you asaf givon and angelo Kessler is created 
the chess scores the best 10 aggressive and blitz friendly openings. Follow the link below and grab your gift today. Here Karyakin played king to g1, threatening again this, threatening again on uh, g4. You can see he is creating problems all around the board. And the rook is active on h file, right? And here if he just played g4, the knight could go back actually on uh, um, g4, for example. The knight can go back and he can develop the pieces like this. And f4 pawn is very, very weak. For that reason, he played this one in order to protect this structure protecting everything try to keep this bishop out of the game for that reason he played like that now he's threatening again so he has to play here knight back this pawn is vulnerable like right now he can take it the knight can go there and you can see we have a very passive bishop here what our queen is doing there black pieces doesn't have any harmony it's uh, very um, it's not very nice here to play with the black pieces like this because it's more difficult to create plans and last but not least he is threatening to capture our bishop with uh, this move so we have to take here he captured like that knight f6 knight d3 Ivan Sukaryakin and here white is uh, clearly better and he managed to win that game so let's go back and see what I'm suggesting here and now I'm suggesting this move bishop g4 and we said um, after d4 actually we didn't say that one uh, it's okay we can play a lot of moves uh, for example we can play a knight c6 knight c6 is also a game of knight c6 something like this because we are creating more pressure there preparing the long castling but he's going to play something like this because he's protecting his queen and he's threatening our queen as we mentioned now we need to take that one take it as soon as possible and after this now you have your first counter attacking move knight to c6 what you are counter attacking you are counter attacking here knight to e5 attacking the queen attacking the bishop so you have activity and you are preparing to castling long side this pawns actually on f4 and f7 doesn't matter so much you need to develop your pieces as soon as possible and you can imagine if you just eliminate these two pawns then a black rook can land on the c file on the f file and create some troubles against the enemy queen and king now we have three options let's examine the first one knight to b5 the idea of this is to attack that pawn obviously and after castling the most logical reply to capture on f7 what to do now he's creating some problems and you need to finalize your development long castling obviously he can take that pawn because if you don't take it then we have knight e5 it's a free tempo right so he has to take this one knight e5 uh, what's happening here after knight e5 he has a check we are not going to uh, to collect material because he has this check and now you have a, a very nice prophylactic move if you manage to remember this one it's very important king to b1 because you are threatening knight e5 right you are securing your king and you are threatening knight to e5 he will not have this check anymore and here you are attacking the queen and uh, bishop another move playable move is this one he can go back and now bishop to e7 try to develop as soon as possible it's also very playable um, move as well but the best one is king to b1 and now after d3 for example you can play there you can sacrifice the other pawn or you are offering him to capture that pawn but you are attacking the bishop and after that you can play this one again he can take this one if he dares actually because we can um, continue with this move rook h to f8 and you can see he will have problems he didn't manage to activate his fat guys the rooks there so we have a lot of initiative and the bishop there is protecting this uh, uh, this maneuver bishop to g5 idea so let's go back this is one variation not so good i guess another one is knight d5 with similar ideas now he's threatening a little bit this one he's threatening knight c7 but he cannot take on f7 so here again uh, knight e5 is a very very strong move very important move to remember the idea is that this bishop is unprotected bishop b5 is c6 is running to c6 knight takes a 7 it's not good because we can attack with the king with a powerful king here attacking the knight and the knight our knight is attacking his queen so we have the simultaneous attack the queen cannot protect the knight so he's going to lose something thanks to the the threat level we created more threats here you need to remember this knight to e5 very important move but even long castling here it's not so so bad it's playable he's going to take back the pawn on the 4 but it's playable Okay, 95 is the best. 
And last but not least, we have this variation bishop to b5 because you would like to create little problems here over the pin. And after that one, we're, we are protecting everything. Knight to d5, now he's threatening maybe to take here, maybe to double our pawns, maybe to take on c7, and we can just castling. Simple as that. What he's going to do now? Again, we're threatening this move, or knight to d4, we're threatening a lot, a lot of things. He can take that pawn, we have some exchanges, and after d5, the most thematic move here, d5, we can develop our pieces uh, naturally and easy, everything is organized here, and his thing stacked there on, uh, on f1. So, this variation, I just... Uh, tell you it's the refutation of uh, the bishop gambit if you remember everything you can play and you can win a lot of your opponents and here i'd like to mention something else i i didn't mention it uh, earlier actually and um, i'm i'm trying to find the correct uh, variation i just found it in this very very long uh, file actually and here Instead of knight c3, we just examined that one, the tricky move order, you need to play bishop to g4, he can play the move d4, another tricky move. Here again, you can, knight e6, bishop e6, it's uh, the most playable line, but I don't really like it. Knight c6, it's what I really, really like, because we just develop our pieces naturally, this is coming actually, and here after that, this one, queen d2, and now after g5, here white played this move uh, g3. The idea behind that move actually is to attack that pawn and if we just uh, take there, it wasn't the best move and the idea after g3 is to avoid any checks on h3 because if white already developed the knight on f3 we can take it off and in any situation that he's going to play g3 we have this check here on h3 and white can play this line in order to avoid this check actually during the game here it wasn't good to take on f3 this was the mistake actually and a very strong grandmaster played that move you need to play queen to h5 try to keep the the um, everything locked on the king side don't open lines there because you need to do it a little later and you do, would like to play this move f5 to open up the f line or not the the h line because if you're just capturing the pawn here you are opening the h line obviously he played that one now what are you going to do and after this move he take like this and now you can see the rook is active why to open up the rook harassing our queen and here we have a game uh, williams against howell howell is a very very strong grandmaster a very nice uh, acute uh, commentator actually i really like to to see to see him but in this game he went wrong after this he captured there we have some exchanges more exchanges now he has to take like this because the h pawn is pinned because you just open the h line by yourself now he captured there he captured that he can capture an h7 but before that he's attacking f7 and after castling he just played that on attacking the rook and after this he just captured the pawn the game is approximately equal here and he managed to um, to equalize the game but after some moves here, as you can see, this is the game continuation. White is completely winning here, but Howell managed to um, draw the game later. So, this is very, very tricky move here, and you should remember not to capture on f3. This is something important that I'd like to say. You can play queen h5, and after this move, you can castle, and after this one, again, he's trying to develop. Now, you have bishop g7 as one game that played, or you have the very powerful f5. This is a very strong move. Try to liberate your pieces, try to open the king's side, but more specifically the f-line, try to attack there on the f-line. This is everything that you need to remember in the king's gambit, you can take, and after this line bishop to c4, you can give this check here on h4, and after this move, you need to remember to play d6, and any time that he's going to develop his knight, pin it, capturing, and everything will be okay. If you would like to get attacking positions in every opening, then I suggest you this amazing course, 10 Aggressive Openings Blitz Friendly. And here I'd like to show you the lessons inside the website. If you are logged in, then you are going to see this new menu profile. If you click it, you are going to see this page and then you can click here My Lessons. From this one, you can see your available lessons. And if you scroll down, you can click here 10 Aggressive Openings with Asaf Givon, with this fantastic author, we create together the lessons and you can see here one lesson after the other, you can see typical mistakes after that, how to start the game correctly, the best 10 
moves then you can see what are the aggressive openings and then you're going to learn one lesson after the other we have a lot of lessons there and you can create a very solid and strong repertoire with white and black and here you can see two of the free lessons that i already published them on youtube and last but not least here you can you can download the pgn theory on your website you can download the practice the pgn files you can see all of the games online on my website or if you click here on practice pdf then you can see the exercises in the pdf format and you will be available to download this as well you can set up these positions you have a lot of interesting examples in each position from every every single opening I suggest you this fantastic course in order to start correctly in every every single opening. Thanks for your time and I hope you enjoyed the video. Here it's time for action. This is the initial page of my website and here you can click give me access to get access to free lessons. You can read this page and if you scroll down here you can add your name and your email. After that you're going to take a free lesson how to avoid chess blunders. So time for action is now and you're very welcome to join my mail list.